this is Deckard6, and welcome to a series I'm titling, Not Porn. I will confess, I play a lot of Japanese age games, which are essentially games with porn in them. But some of these games are really good games in their own right. Even if you take the porn out, I'm going to start by looking at one of these, Udaware no Uteware Runmono, the one of whom legends are sung. That's a bit of a mouthful for one word. Uh, you have to cut the music off because I don't want to worry about any uh, YouTube flagging. I've had enough of that shit. Uh, it's a full-length JRPG. And pre-warnings, one, this game is anime as fuck. Two, there will actually be no porn, despite what this may look like at the beginning. All porn will be cut out. The mysterious intro to start with. And then cute anime girl. That's with dog ears at this point. Yep, we're in for a anime ride. You might notice right out of the gate that the protagonist has a voice of his own. A lot of uh, H games go for the faceless protagonist. Oh, we got a little music interlude here. And another acute anime girl. Yep, that's the uh, kind of game we're in for. Though we do start off with the cliché of amnesia. We are mysteriously wounded, we don't know where we are, how we came to be there, or who we are. I also have the uh, voices from the PlayStation 2 version. You might be like, wait, porn? PlayStation 2? I don't think the Sony allows porn on their consoles. Well, this game was successful enough that it got a non-porn version and a non-porn anime out of it. It gives it a bit of an air of legitimacy, which is part of the reason I'm starting with this one. So, we've got the cliché start. Wake up, battered, injured with amnesia. And you can learn a little bit of Japanese from this as well. They bother to do uh, Obachan and translate it as grandma. We're also introduced to our first female character who is basically a healer. We're hitting a lot of cliches so far. At least she's actually like a medicinal healer rather than like a white mage. I'm just going to wave my staff and then you're healed. And we will get women that are capable of doing things beyond healing over the course of the game. It doesn't quite fall into the uh, full cliche of women exist for one person, to heal the men who do the fighting. Oh, hello there, little girl. So now we, we can see that they're full on uh, dog girls in this case. Now we're getting the full, the full dose of amnesia here. So we obviously have things we need to find. This is part of the reason so many games start out this way. If you start off wounded and amnesia, you immediately have the hook of, well, why do I have amnesia? Who was I before? And why am I injured? 
also to putting you in a place that the character oh. is uh, finding unfamiliar provides them with a chance so to explain to you, the player, what's going on. ダメですよ。本当に大怪我なんですから。迷惑になる。God, so Japanese. Oh, I'm sorry I'm bleeding to death. Just don't let me be a burden. The only people that possibly apologize more than the Japanese are the Canadians. Admittedly, that's a stereotype, but it does seem to be the way. I mean, Japan has a whole big thing about deference you have to do. You can end up with almost an entire conversation that's two people apologizing to each other. Particularly if your uh, station to each other is not immediately established. Because a lot of the uh, Japanese language is... Um, based around station, or at least the uh, pronouns and stuff, with Khan, with Chan, Kun, uh, Senpai. Oh, here, here we get the full amnesia reveal. I kind of spoiled that, but it's... It's not exactly a real spoiler for something that's five minutes into the game. His full realization of, Crap, I'm in a video game! I do like the fact that every character has a voice. It's a sign of many of the... Uh, lower quality of age game when you suddenly just have voices for uh, the female characters with which you will be um, intimate. But having characters like uh, grandmother and the protagonist voice is generally a sign that you're getting a higher quality of product. I sort of like uh, Grandma's whole philosophy here. Eh, your memory will get back and you will come back eventually. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. In the meantime, we can tend to your body. That's what we can do. <laughs> And of course, she laughs about the fact that when the pain medication uh, runs off, you're going to be in one hell of a bad time. You also see the story-wise, the uh, game restricts our movement by the fact that we're injured. We can't decide, oh, we're just going to leave the town. We're constrained here to get the uh, story introduced to us at the pace they uh, want without it feeling overly artificial. It also gives us an immediate reason to sympathize with these uh, villagers and with the uh, female lead. Because they're helping us with our injury and they're uh, extending their hospitality to us. Now, here's something that caught me the first time I was watching, or reading. First of all, he notices that the ears and stuff are cute. And he immediately assumes they are accessories. That immediately applies that he is in some place very different than where he's used to. Yep. 
He assumes they are initially... They are just accessories, girls dressed up in cosplay. And is sort of thrown by the fact that they are actual dog girls. いったい何があったんですかいや。そうって。まさか。スポーツ。でもよかった。言葉もはっきりしてるし。あ。それで名前とか何か名前。あ。そう。だから、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ
おばあちゃんたらんで何か I, I'm trying to give people time to read. After these first few episodes are recorded, the people are reading them and are having trouble. I'll uh, slow down, but I'm basically going on how long it takes me to read. Sometimes giving a uh, time for uh, people who to speak, or if I'm talking, it might take me a little longer to read. So now we're being given clothes. We're being given. Uh, we're being given a name. This is. 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 This also, apparently, notice that he is unfamiliar with wearing this type of clothes. Eru, how is it? Maybe he is wearing it. Ah, yes, he is wearing it. Very good. Hmm? Let's go. Thank you very much. Oh, we're not allowed to call her Oba-san. She's too scary. Huh? Too scary, San, to Oyobi. So she's not grandma, at least not yet. And now we're able to start our uh, rehabilitative therapy of walking around the village. And we're introduced to this screen. We're able to then wander around to various areas. Let's start in the living room. I mean, that's where we are, right? Otosan? Otosan? Oh, it's her. We finally actually get to hear her speak. And we get a name to go with our mysterious little shadow. At least the first time we've been formally introduced. This seems to further fit with the, uh... This is her father's clothes. We're being accused of not being father after wearing it. Yep, here we go. Oh, and of course, our female lead and her little sister are orphans. And of course, we end up looking like our father from behind, and we're even given her father's old name as our load name of Hakuru. I could also title this series Watch Deckard 6 uh, Butcher the Japanese Pronunciation of Names. Is it wrong that I just find our route incredibly adorable? Well, let's just go in order. Let's go check out the square. Walk around, get some physical rehabilitation. She's a strong farm woman. That's right. Give, give him a reason to make it something for you rather than something for her. That way she doesn't have to uh, show her uh, show her weakness. Allows her to maintain her pride. So we're given the village is definitely sort of an idyllic little. Uh, Feudal Japan style village. <laughs> it's sort of creating a feeling of life. Oh, and I guess we're going to be introduced to some of the townsfolk. Those are some serious abs. This guy has some serious abs. The masked stranger! 
At least we have a name beyond the Masked Stranger. This is one of the words I'm not sure why they bother to just have the translation for it, unless it's like a, hey, learn Japanese a little. This elder seems like a perfectly fine word to just have. It's not like it's some of the other things you're having to pay attention to people addressing them as their name. Apparently, we look a lot like your father. And we have the name Tero. Uh, keep thinking that sounds like the Japanese world for barrel. Which I think might be deliberate. Since he's supposed to be a really built, broad guy. <laughs> I was debating about doing my own narration, but so much of this game is just told in dialogue, and the dialogue already has its own narration. I'm not really, you know, reading over it. Oh, Say so things like Anchan, Obasan, Oichi, uh, Oichi, uh, uh, Oyaji, or Rebbe's are all sort of identifiable names. They're things people refer to as a lot. So that's the reason they get the translations. So you can identify it when they're referring to people by name in the dialogue. <laughs> それを言ったら。うちの宿録が騒がしくてすまないね。エルル私にもその男前。ちん。ま、とにかくその鎮とこ前に私たちのことを。Wait, <laughs> wait, wait. I rewound the dialogue a little bit. Introduce us to this strange stud muffin. I'm wondering how much of that is original dialogue and how much of that is uh, translator uh, license. So we're getting the feel here that everyone in the village refers to themselves as brothers or sisters and all that kind of stuff is a matter of course. So they get the feel that everyone here is really close. See, they're now addressing it here. The village is really close, and everyone refers to each other as brother and sister, and it's one big happy family. And here, how are your widespread villagers shot? They're fairly easy names to remember. You didn't even notice when you started calling you big brother? At least it's not calling you little brother. I mean, a man like that could probably get away with calling anyone little brother. Once again, those abs. まったく。突然揺れたと思ったら容赦なく人んちを倒していく。だから立てる時にもう少し真面目にやれと言ったそれをあんたと来たら面白がって変な風に組み上げたりして、うちだけだよ。あんな見事にぶっ倒れたのは
何言ってんのいろいろと草やああしてる時のエルル目の輝きが違うじゃないさうんでもどうしたんだい今までそんなことは気にもしなかったのにあっ Yep, we can all tell this. Everyone is immediately trying to hook us up with Eru. And of course, she is getting teased over that, and Hakuru is completely oblivious. Ha ha ha, even referring that he'll be a lot of work if he were to be a husband. That's a nice you know, turn of phrase. Better start from the day leaves us behind. I kind of like that. And of course, he's a drunkard as well. This guy is like the stereotypical big introduction character. He's big, he's brawny, he's drunk. Who wants to bet he's party tank? Raise your hand. I'm raising my hand, by the way. Just in case you can't see. And now we've got our whole introduction to the village. We have one last place to look on this first day. The fields. Hmm. Some of these outlying fields are... Uh, Dry and eroded. Yes. So we have limited farming techniques. They can only farm. Good ideal soil. So we have limited farming techniques. What kind of soil would that be? Clay soil? Something that just sucks in water and sort of just lets... Doesn't really have anything for plants to grow on? Hey, and now we're implied that perhaps he knows something more. So we're getting some pretty obvious tells that perhaps he's from a more advanced era. And people here are living more like feudal Japan. Because while he might not remember where he's from, he has like knowledge of farming and the like. More advanced knowledge than the uh, local inhabitants, at least. Oh, and now we get the, uh, the family uh, dinner scene. That's classic. So we're hitting a lot of cliches, as I might have mentioned in this first episode. But cliches aren't necessarily a bad thing. They give you something to latch onto. They give you a sense of familiarity. A prayer. I wonder if those gods are ever actually going to show up. It seems likely. I mean, it's a fantasy setting. If people believe in gods, Odds are those gods are there. Is that the potato thing? Oh, thank you, Hakuro, for explaining it to me. I wonder if it's like a potato, uh, sweet potato or a turnip or something. So it appears they're not actually authentically Japanese. Not as much rice, more potato and root vegetables. 
気持ちはありがたいが I can say for one, after you've been injured and laid up for a while, as soon as you start to recover, your appetite returns in force. When you're actually like, really injured, you don't want to eat. You're just lying there, looking up there, like, oh, well, this sucks. Ah! Apparently, one does not want to stand between Aruru and food. I know. Yeah, once, you're, once you start recovering, your appetite returns in force. Rumble, rumble. Oh. She's been uh, trying to ensure that there's enough food for everyone else rather than looking after herself first. Oh, she's looking out behind the curtain. Or the wall. She is just so adorable. これから先どうするかそれは前にも言うたが何も思い出せんのではそれは気持ちはとても嬉しいのですが困った時はお互い様でいや一まだ傷も言えとらんそんな体では満足に動くですが何かまわんよ生きていくだけの糧はやん一人二人増えたところで変わらんからエルルアルルお前アルルもうんエコじゃなあみそいのとき、エルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルルわしは一応ここの村を支えていることになる。Uh, so、もし何かあったら遠慮なく言うといい。何か何かあったら遠慮なく言うといい。何か何かあったら遠慮なく言うといい。何か何かあったら遠慮なく言うといい。何か何かあったら遠慮なく言うといい。あとのことはまた今度考え。Alright, no. さて、no dream. ビクトするか。Color me surprised. Now that actually works out well for our timing.、Uh, that'll wrap up this episode. We'll tackle the next day tomorrow.